Mabuhai, Kamustika, welcome, how are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. It's time to talk about cost of loving in the Philippines, monthly expenses. How much does it cost to love a woman in the Philippines? That's what I want to talk about today, and there are many considerations. Please subscribe to Love Beyond the Sea, where I do my best to explain what I think it's going to take in order to have a lasting, satisfying marriage to a Filipina. Comments are encouraged, and please use the notification bell for updates. For the time being, I aim for a couple of uploads a week and a live stream every week or two. I am today going to talk about heating expenses, electricity, communication, insurance, entertainment, and savings. Now, affordability, location, availability, newer or older, and renting or owning are significant decisions when looking for love in the Philippines. Being married to a Filipina for over four years now, I have some knowledge I can share with men who are considering marrying a Filipina and men who are married to a Filipina who just want to hear other men's experiences. I can tell you that the cost of loving a Filipina is the same no matter the country you are living in, and there are many couples where the husband is not loaded or rich, but his Filipina wife is happy. So let's talk about affordability. Can you even afford it? One consideration for a Westerner and Filipina relationship is the affordability. Will I have to give up too much? That's an important question because many men have raced to the Philippines or gotten involved with a Filipina without realizing that they weren't prepared to sustain the romance once the initial excitement wore off. A better question might be, can you afford not to? I was single for decades before I decided to look for a woman from another country to marry, something that I had never given a millisecond of thought to, but was at a time in my life where I knew I had to try something different. At 53, I met Isa online and married her 53 days later in the Philippines. Whatever it has cost me has been worth it. Before I look at some budget expense categories, here are a few things to consider before investing your heart into a Filipina, and they are location, newer or older, and renting or owning. Location, this comes down to the provinces or the cities. A fair question to ask, is which location affords me the best opportunity to find the Filipina wife. Now, I will uh, let my wife give you her opinion as someone who knows the lay of the land, so I take hers as more important than my own, and I'm going to note the time she answers this important real estate question in a recent live stream with the link and pin it for you in the comments section. She disagreed with my opinion, by the way. Of course, good women can be found anywhere but she um, told me where she thought a Western man had the best chance, thus making the relationship less costly in the end. Availability. There are ups and downs in any market, but availability of Filipinas to marry is very high right now. It's a buyer, buyer's market. I personally know a half dozen Philam couples right here in town, and I've communicated with others that I have gotten to know on YouTube men are very interested in marrying Filipinas. To my surprise, even though it was made about 14 months ago, the most viewed video I have, and the one I have getting the most views the previous 28 days, and even now the last two days, is how I met my wife on Christian Filipina. It's a short six minute plus video, and this tells me that men are looking for a wife in the Philippines. It's still something that men from around the world are wanting to invest in. In my channel, I want to talk about many practical ways to make it work. Well, um, foundation is important. Sticking with my house analogy, I believe the most important factor in keeping maintenance costs low is a strong foundation. Personally, this was a woman who was a Christian who had character, who was going to continue to grow in character. I believe I was, or rather, I believe it was this kind of woman I could decide to marry sooner than later. As I have stated in previous videos, commonality is good, but there are some that are more significant than others, and that's what you will need to decide. You should find things to do together after you are married, but before that, you need to think about what will be undergirding your relationship. <clears throat> now about newer or older Filipina. Another factor for a man trying to decide on the Filipina to pursue is knowing if he should marry a newer model or one who has been around the block. I was looking for someone 20 to 30 and found someone in that range. She seemed mature 
and had borne responsibility in her life, and it was a pleasure to chat with her in those early and exhilarating days, about four hours a day during the work week. Now, it can be a mistake to only desire a newer model home, I mean Filipina, because while she looks great on the outside and has high market value, it's what's on the inside that you have to live with, so character matters. You can gauge this by questions you ask, see my videos on questions to ask at different stages of the relationship, and by her replies. At some point, when you are ready to make a proposal and close the deal, you'll want to know what her values are, her relationship to her parents and family is in general, um, what's important to her, basically anything you need in order to trust her. You won't know everything until you are together under the same roof, but once you've made a commitment, you should stick with it and stop shopping for houses after that, even stop looking at other places to live. Having said that, there are Filipinas who are 30 plus who may already have the maturity and life experiences that you want. Honestly, the choices are plentiful in both categories. You may have a difficult time deciding because I do believe that you have a ton of options. Also, depending on your overall health and well-being, intimacy is critical to a relationship and I think you should consider how long you can um, please this woman. So having an enormity or an enormous disparity in age is likely to yield diminishing returns. Now I am pro age gap, however, and I have a playlist devoted to that topic I invite you to look at. And let's cover renting and owning here briefly. Renting and owning. I want to keep this brief because I believe statistics show that renting tends to be more costly emotionally and financially than owning. There is something to be said for making a commitment and sticking with it rather than renting where you can check out any time you want. In case my dry sense of humor and wit is confusing, I am referring to being intimate or not before marriage. Filipinas are used to Westerners, Westerners and their thirst for young women, but she wants someone who will commit to her through thick and thin. Why not show her you want to marry her because of the person she is? Then you can have all the intimacy you can handle later. I realize it is common to taste before buying, but that really isn't necessary. Now on to some basic budgeted expenses. Heat. I have already alluded to that in renting and owning and will be more specific here. No, I am not referring to the monthly utility of heat since that <clears throat> isn't necessary in the Philippines where heat is ever present until the evening, thankfully. What I mean is sexual heat or intimacy. How is that an expense item? Because in this area, one needs to invest to acquire, and that is very rewarding. If you are marrying a younger Filipina, she has the needs of a younger Filipina. She is young and pretty and has needs. Do I believe sex is a need? Yes, I do. I know no one has died due to complications from not having sex, but I came close. But the emotional toll is great. I was actually on life support. Just kidding. I don't know why this is so controversial. Sex is a gigantic need. Whatever you need to discuss about it before marrying a Filipina, please do. I can say a lot more, but I am leery of YouTube deleting this video. For the best heat, the Westerner will need to invest heavily in time, kindness, forgiveness, gentleness, being considerate of her, things like that. If you can afford this, it makes for the healthiest environment for intimacy with any woman. A marriage counselor will tell you that sexual health is a marriage or in a marriage is a sign of overall relational health. A high heating bill is a good thing. On to the next expense. Electricity. Let's substitute the word sparks, sparks for electricity. There can be a tendency after getting married for a man to slow down his pursuit because he just got married. While it is natural to breathe a sigh of relief after pursuing her for a number of months or years, you most likely will be shifting from a long distance relationship to the closest of ones. Biblically, where it talks about people getting married having troubles in the flesh, it is referring to the husband and wife's natures, which are sinful, being exposed on a daily basis. They say in dating, it all changes on the first meeting, and likewise in marriage, it all changes when you are together. Sparks are going to fly sometimes, but to have good sparks, to have improving chemistry, 
will require an investment of sacrifice being willing to yield to her in many situations especially initially in my opinion investing quality and quantity time with her especially considering how very far in distance she is from her family i would encourage you to allow her plenty of social media time for as long as she needs as she adjusts from the philippines to your country other things you can do is tell her you are thankful for not just what she does for you but thankful for her compliment her regularly listen to her carefully be patient with her take an interest in her family back home now, this is going to cost you time and effort but i believe you get what you put into this relationship what about communication this is where phone bill would come in under a real budget let your filipina know that you value her opinion and want to hear what she says and listen carefully learn to not be distracted when communicating with each other often you might have to politely say um, hon please put your phone down for a minute either on an as needed basis or regularly scheduled i think it's a good idea to talk about what's going on in your lives what both of you are thinking feeling believing experiencing talk about the future like the above spending more in these areas will yield better results what about insurance in case the whole thing falls apart should you get some kind of insurance called a prenuptial agreement well there isn't enough time you know for this here but many say they may not carry any weight legally i don't know about that and I know why this is done I am realistic and I won't consider it a, a wrong thing to do if you feel that strongly about it it seems like practical protection against the high divorce rate you know would be a, a good thing at the same time it doesn't shield one from a painful marriage here is where we have to acknowledge that marriage is simply costly sure money is involved but there are different excuse me difficult circumstances to work through personal weaknesses to deal with in-laws cultural differences etc what i personally do is work and pray for the health of our marriage one day i hope to do a video on the various things uh, that i pray for in our marriage i get what i consider sound advice i try not to be selfish i try to put my wife above myself and i've made some big sacrifices which i consider my responsibility i want my marriage to succeed more than i want to be personally successful or even healthy as you watch my videos old and new you'll see topics that go beyond the surface of a relationship i don't live in fear of our relationship failing but i do try to do whatever it takes for it to go well that is enough insurance for me you do the best you can having insurance doesn't mean that the house won't burn down or get damaged in a tornado but i take responsibility for trying to keep it together how about entertainment <clears throat> now i'm not exactly good time charlie but i realize that it's important to invest in some kind of entertainment it may be getting used to some karaoke to see some of my videos in the just us playlist maybe some travel perhaps it's going to movies watching her favorite series it may even be her watching the ball game with you my wife loves theatrical musical plays and we have gone to see cinderella beauty and the beast moses in branson missouri that's a seven hour drive and we have tickets for the phantom of the opera coming up on her birthday i know i'm forgetting one for whatever reason it was in an outdoor theater and it's very satisfying for me to see her happiness now it's an investment a cost if you will but like all the others they are worth it in other words you don't want to be cheap or stingy you will sow what or you will reap what you sow now savings my attitude when married is to go all out that is quite different from a typical dating relationship where both see each other and from the typical ldr where being in person is not very often in those there is no compelling to go all out because you don't know if you'll even be getting married to that person you're still evaluating the direction and health of the relationship after a pro proposal is accepted a marriage has been enacted and you now have an obligation to take care of her emotionally and physically i don't see the need to hold anything back or to keep score i believe when she sees that her husband is all in the likelihood is she will do her best too i would expect that one or the other is doing more for the other at different times but that it tends to equal out 
early on, I am investing much care in my wife. However, at the end of my life, I think my wife will have her hands full with me more than these um, early days, and we've been married four years. And, you know, my needs are going to change over time. The costs are well worth it when you find your love beyond the sea.